Hello everybody, it's Michelle here with Angel Souls and this is our weekly angelic message for the week beginning May 29th, 2023. So we will have a general overview here in the beginning and then I will break it down into three groups. Timestamps will be in the description box. Sorry, I just hit my microphone. <laughs> we'll be down in the description box. So we'll get into the messaging here. I only put this stuff in the weeklies because this is where like people are actually seeing the information. So forgive this next part. If you want to get a reading, angelsouls444.com. Those are the standard readings. I am running really ahead of schedule on those if you want to get in and get one of those. Uh, and I am still doing live readings. So in order to do that, since that is based on availability and does have a different price point, email me at angelsouls444 at gmail.com. We'll see what we can do. And then I think I found my new passion, you guys. So you know I'm a writer. You know, I'm working on all kinds of stuff all the time, but the publishing process has always been, I don't know, <laughs> off-putting. I don't know. I worked in publishing for many years, but now I just started to put some stuff out there. Yes, that will include my book. That will include, that's a fiction uh, piece that I have to come out. I have another novel that's been in the drawer since I was in my 20s. So... I will pull that out, see where we're at with that, <laughs> and maybe get that up. I'm going to be working on my own deck. And I have been doing, just to like ease me into the publishing process, I've been doing journals. So I already have one that's out. This is a proof. Yours, if you got a copy of this, would not have this stripe across the front. Simple, six by nine. This one's a dream journal, just a very simplistic little thing, like I said, just to kind of get a feel for it. But eventually I will do lots of other projects. So links for all that stuff in the description box and I guess I should also tell you uh, because all the courses on Gumroad at this point are from like at least a couple of years ago I went through and reduced all the prices on that uh, so if you never got a chance to take one of those courses angelsouls.gumroad.com now would be the time like I they're like on clearance <laughs> I'm that person now. Okay, so there's all the updates on the offerings. Again, sorry about that. I would prefer to not ever have to talk about that. But if I just put it in the community tab, a lot of times people don't see it. So anyway, let's get on to our message. I want to start off this week. This is taking us into June. This is where we're going to be seeing what we're made of. All those things that you've been afraid of, you realize now have a very simple solution. <laughs> now have a very uh, simple solution. Uh, you you could handle it a lot better than you thought. That's what is really going on. So it's not, I want to make it clear, it's not this feeling of an external thing coming in and saving you, although something could come in and definitely help you out. Uh, but you realize I, I can trust myself with handling whatever needs to be handled. So not being so intimidated. I'm especially getting, I know school's out now for most people, but let's say you're getting ready to go to school in the fall and maybe it's college and you have to move to a different city and you're super intimidated. You start to get a feel for, oh, look at that. I took care of that. I just got my apartment set up or I found roommates that I think it's going to be really great. You know, it's that sort of thing. Realizing you were fearful for no reason. Okay. Morganite relationship healing. This is nice because for a lot of you out there, this could be having a deeper understanding of a dynamic that maybe had been going on, getting more information around that, and being able to heal. If you are not getting more information around a topic, you find a way to heal for you. Always with proper support, whatever way that looks for you. But this is gentle. This is opening your heart again some of you might be now getting into a space where you realize you're ready for love and you're open to that. So it's very lovely. And I want to say Morganite is very gentle. It's sort of like rose quartz, okay? It is a gentle, real love. So this isn't, um, how do I want to say? I don't, I don't want to <laughs> be careful. How I, like passion is good. But if, if it's a kind of relationship that you're coming into where it's all passion, where you can't be human, there's no gentle understanding or acceptance of you as a person, 
meaning like especially for women well, men go through this too but feeling like you have to show up in a certain way this isn't that this is more of like that deep unconditional love there can be passion with it but the passion is authentic it's not an act it's not putting on an act for anybody whether that's you know your persona your interests you know all that kind of stuff oh i have two cards okay so we got the next two <laughs> so we have moonstone cycles the moon has been coming up quite a bit astrologers let me know what's happening with the moon this week y'all agree i love you <laughs> and this is to me this is haniel this is gabriel this is um sitting with your feelings right look at this we're a little mushy gushy this week <laughs> You might realize it's the end of a cycle where you've had to fight. It's the end of a cycle of worrying about money. Okay, so that just came up. And it's funny because the structures out in the world are still clunking along. They're about to, you know, yeah, like completely go out at any moment. But um, for us, we're finding our own way. So this is being very resourceful. This is um, allowing yourself to sit with your emotions. As I said at the top, realizing you didn't have anything to be afraid of. Because it, especially when we're thinking about a full moon. That's like looking at things that are somewhat hidden or the light's only shining on a part of the story uh, at first. And as, as the moon gets brighter now it exposes right so that doesn't have to be a bad thing the only people who get scared by the word exposed are the ones who have something to hide right so exposed means i see the truth of it i i now see like i said before i had nothing to fear in the first place or yeah this was a, a terrible situation and yeah it took a bit to come through it but it's not like the first time i ever went through it where i really was lost and had no idea how to get through. I can lean on me, lean on my experiences, and figure out solutions. And then we have fluorite, learning, right? Again, you see this whole pattern? You're learning about yourself. Now, fluorite can also be a very abundant crystal. So some of you might be, one, acknowledging a truth to yourself. If it is around money, maybe it's... Um, let me move my microphone closer, sorry. Um, maybe it's realizing I need to educate myself about money. When we're in the spiritual realm, everyone's like, oh no, that's just for lower frequency beings who are... <laughs> Those lower frequency beings, you know, when you walk into a room and you don't know um, how to be in that room, you're going to get shoved aside, right? And I'm not saying go be conniving, you know, still keep your morals and your ethics, right? But admitting to yourself, you know what? Maybe I'm afraid to be abundant. Am I afraid to be prosperous? Have I been taking the the wrong approach? Here's an example. I hear this all the time. I've worked so hard, where's my money, right? I have, and I've done it myself. I've started to feel like pressured and like I'm getting, you know, I'm, I'm in a realm that I don't know very well. And instead of learning about it and therefore releasing the fears, I would go into victimhood. Like, this isn't fair. You know, like, <laughs> why didn't I get the promotion? You know, all of that. Instead of looking at, um, you know, what your actual fears are and coming past it. That's the whole theme of this week. Then we have Tiger's Eye Courage. Y'all are stepping up. Some of you are trying something new. You're exploring, but more than anything, you, you know, this is very grounded. So taking a grounded approach to it, getting, getting into a space where you're not allowing yourself to be held back by old approaches, old ideas about things. Oh, hi. Okay. <laughs> but with that tiger's eye, with the whole thing, it's like, I'm going to try something new. So yeah, it, it is a little bit around how I relate to others, you know, how, for you guys taking that approach, like how do I relate to others? Um, what hard truth do I need to admit to myself? And maybe that is the hard truth is you don't deserve the treatment you've gotten. And you can't expect people to apologize or make amends. You're going to have to work around that so that you don't get stuck there. All right. So you don't allow situations to hold you up. Biggest example would be the economy. 
You know, I hear, I, I've witnessed it. So many people getting terrified about the economy. Then you're right where they want you to be. Have courage. Okay. Turquoise, awaken your empathy. The number is 34, reduces to seven. This is, this is like this swirl and, but there's light in this. So there might be a lot of ideas going around. Um, a lot of new epiphanies, right? Now this is awaken your empathy. Uh, and I think that helps with this relationship healing here. And that helps end this cycle. <laughs> You're learning new things. And then you get this and from a grounded standpoint, okay? You kind of get this new, if you want to see it as a new lease on life. Now I know how to move forward. Now I know where I've gotten myself stuck. I know not to do that anymore. But this is a very creative time. Let those ideas flow. But again, it's being freed from old situations that had you stuck. But had you stuck in a perspective, right? It's really great. It's really fun. Comment down below. How do you feel when you first hear this video? And then as your week is playing out, come on back to this video. You don't have to watch it again if you don't want. I mean, sure, do it if you want. But <laughs> come on back to the video and leave your comment again about how it's going. All right? So we're going to leave it there for everybody. I love you all so much. We're going to get on to the groups. group one let's see what is going on for you remember to comment how this hits you the first time you hear it and then as your week goes on come on back and watch it again leave another comment if you want to watch it again you don't have to but come on back and you know leave another comment how did it end up going for you now I'm feeling for the group that's tuning in here Oh man, of course there's a stuck energy. What human isn't stuck at some point? But this is stuck in generational thinking. Now let me explain this. I'm getting the image. I, I see this beautiful grandma, grandmother. I see her. She's a grandmother. And she's in her home and it's um, a little, you know, it needs a little sprucing up. But uh, she's coming out. There's a big porch and she's sitting very slowly in a chair on her porch and the feeling I get with this is then this nostalgia it's um, remembering how different things used to be and for everybody it's going to be different but there's this feeling here of who you used to be at that time like maybe for some of us that's um, having go back to a moment when your grandparents if you ever knew your grandparents or some elder who you were when you were sitting with them so usually this is a child sitting with an elder that feels like the connection that we have going on here what was that like when you looked at this elder grandmother grandfather did you have an appreciation for their life experience what were your thoughts of them right did you wonder how they got through my grandmother I remember growing up, she still had one of those old wash bins that had the crank thing to wring out the clothes. She still had one of those. Now, my grandfather uh, was an auctioneer, uh, and he did a lot of he's He was an entrepreneur, so he did a lot of different things. But one of the time periods was an auctioneer, so he went to estate sales. 
I don't know where that washing machine came from, but I can only imagine it was probably something like that. Like he was dealing with antiques and things. So I just remember thinking, how does grandma know how to work this thing? And she had it. I remember I was standing next to her. I'm like, what is this? And there was a part of me that thought, whoa, she's so resourceful. Like she could just figure all this out. And I just thought she was so smart. And my grandfather, he always reinvented himself. He, he wasn't good at sitting still. <laughs> like he had to keep creating. And I remember being a little intimidated by that because he was doing all this stuff that I don't think I could ever do. It has that sort of energy around this for you. So sit with that. Uh, dare I say journal about it? I'm laughing because I just created a journal. And uh, you know you don't have to use mine. Any journal that you want, sit and just write about that. Or if you want to turn on your phone and record, you know, you can do that as well. So we have calcite relaxation. So part of I, this grandmother elder kind of energy, I know a lot of you are going to say, could this be uh, an ancestor coming through 100%, 100% teaching you that, you know, times were different for them. Uh, there were different things to focus on, right? And um, we call it simpler, but they're saying it wasn't simple. But they just became relaxed with how they had to do things. Right. So there was no like for the example of my grandmother, uh, washing machines, as we know them, existed. I'm not that old. All right. You know, like they existed, but she opted to have this old um, I don't even know what it's called, like a wash bin type thing with the ringer on it, which she probably knew from when she was younger. So where do we want to hang on to something from the past for one? But. This says relaxation. We'll get to that here in a second. There's a message here of don't over romanticize the past, right? <laughs> like things were still, um, everything still had to be figured out just like they have to be figured out now. So don't do that. Don't try to do this escapism of, oh, the good old days. Oh, the this, oh, the that. You might be familiar with it, but it still comes with the same amount of work. Does that make sense? So this relaxation part is, it almost feels like, I know this is a weird message around this, but it feels like we can relax when we're not turning our backs to the future out of fear and looking back and trying to access the past, which we can't. And for some of you watching this, there's something stressful about that. And it's almost like grieving. It's almost like you're forcing yourself into this grief state, trying to bring something back that won't come back. Does that make sense? So that calcite relaxation is like, hey, you know, be present. Be present. You know, again, the message is we've always had to figure stuff out. <laughs> so it wasn't any better in the past. You wouldn't have done any better in the past. Okay. Spirit Quartz music. This, I'm telling you, this is like, hey, let go of the longing. Let go of maybe regrets or wishing you could do things over. This to me feels like meditation. This is talking about attunement. Now this is very much Archangel Sandalfin kind of energy because of the music. He's known as the Archangel of Music, but he's also the Archangel of Sound Healing. This is telling you, you have, like it's one thing, yeah, it's an overcorrection message. It's one thing to learn from our elders, respect them, understand where they were coming from, you know, you know, take the wisdom that they're offering us and apply it. But some are overcorrecting and going so far to be like, oh, I really miss my grandma. Now I'm sad. Or, you know, I miss my childhood. Now I'm sad. That's an overcorrection. And that's not what they're trying to get at here. Okay. Does that make sense? I don't know. Hopefully for some of you, this is landing, but we'll see. Diopside, Mother Earth. It, this is like going, okay. This feels like the wisdom of the earth. And I know this feels like a very sort of dichotomous message here. The reason is, is because everyone who's tuning into this group, you're going to have different interpretations of this. So I'm trying to address both. Go to the side of the groundedness, not, oh, grandmother, she had to suffer or whatever. Not focusing on that per se. I mean, have empathy for that and compassion for that, but don't go into it and swim in it, okay? You recognize that, but this is more of like, you know, 
my grandmother taught me that, you know, embrace what's in front of you. And she could make do with whatever. My grandfather taught me that if you lose passion for one thing like that you're doing in life, create something else. Keep exploring. Go for it. Take that risk. Right now, I'm not giving that advice to you, but I'm just saying, <laughs> like, lean on the good stuff, the wise stuff that our elders have always tried to teach us. And what Mother Earth is trying to teach us, right? Okay. Then we have Tanzanite Clarity. This is where your clarity will come in. So there's a lot of, um, I, you know, I wanted to say too, there might be something like choices that we're making in our lives that we think if we do anything else, we'll disappoint someone we love. Maybe if they're on the other side, like, you know, if grandmother's on the other side, she would be so disappointed to know that I didn't get married by now. Or she, you know what I mean? Like living for that. Don't do that. <laughs> That's not what this is. This is the beautiful, and this is where you're getting your clarity from. Tapping into the beautiful wisdom that they taught us and not, you know, the fear that maybe someone had passed along to us. I hope that makes sense. I know it's a little bit, it's a deep message. <laughs> it's a deep message. I hope I'm giving it justice here. But let's see what your color card is. Orange, nurture yourself. The number is 16, reduces to 7. Angels are with you. I mean, this this is a big, you know, archangels are with you, backing you up on this. This is your sacral chakra, okay? And when it says nurture yourself, the sacral chakra is where we can store a lot of emotions. And it's interesting. There's this nostalgia around the message. There's this longing. There's this maybe mourning or grieving or, you know, just morning times gone by and again over romanticizing it and thinking it was simpler no it wasn't you didn't have as good a medicine practices then there were still wars I mean come on <laughs> right? so you had to wring out your clothes which I still am like there's not a spin cycle on the washing machine <laughs> what the heck so this is embracing uh the good that we've been taught but don't go into this emotional state that then stifles that sacral chakra energy. That's the message you're supposed to be taking. All right. So we're going to leave it there for you guys and get on to group two. Hello, group two. Let's see what is going on for you. If you didn't watch the first part, go back and do that. That's a part of your message as well. So group one, if you, if you had just come from that one, they had like a very deep kind of oh, very interesting message. So let's see what's going on for you guys. Let's see. No, I, th I think we have a very different energy for you all. So let's see. Agate, healthy body. So this is making different choices. For a lot of you, I think you're figuring out how not to get wound up in situations, um, giving too much of your time. I actually had somebody who <laughs> I just started, I just met them, I just started talking to them, and uh, they called out how I don't relax. And I was like, yes, I do. Yeah, well, even on your day off, you're talking about how you got groceries. And I didn't even tell the person that I actually had a client that day as well. But I only had one client that day. So I thought that was like a relaxing day, right? Because <laughs> usually it's back to back to back. And just having that person reflect that back to me, it opened something up because they're absolutely right. And I was like, I don't think I know how to relax. I think even when I'm relaxing, I'm taking a class. <laughs> Like, it's, it's bizarre, and I need to stop being such a nerd, okay? But, <laughs> but really finding a way to evaluate that for yourself. Do I give myself time to decompress, to relax? Am I getting an appropriate type of exercise for where I am in my life now? For example, if you are a woman in your 50s and 60s, doesn't mean you can't still be a runner or climbing mountains. Of course you can but if you're also having a lot of hormonal shifts and fatigue and you don't feel like doing those things, you need to give yourself a little grace, okay? <laughs> like, or maybe you've been running your whole life and now your knees are starting to hurt. Give yourself a little grace. It's okay. Making those adjustments. Black Obsidian, the shadow. Part of what has 
literally I'm hearing eating away at you. What has been eating away at you is now coming up to the surface. Now this goes along with the overall message of just because it's in the shadow, well, first of all, something's gonna be coming out of the shadows. And it might've been something that you've always been so terrified. If I have to face that, oh my gosh, what would I ever do? And then it comes out and you're like, ow. <laughs> you always imagine there's this huge monster and it's not, it's a little, it's a problem about this big. Not to diminish anybody's experiences, of course, but I'm saying, um, you know, as, as you approach it, it's, it's something much more manageable. And some of you might be getting help to deal with this. If it's mental health, you're getting with a therapist. If it's uh, physical health, you're getting with a doctor. If it's an exercise routine, you're getting with an appropriate trainer. Okay, where am I getting that from? I, I've had a few trainers in my life. I always ended up with the trainers who were completely out of touch, one with a woman's body, not understanding hormones, and not understanding height requirements. Let me explain that one. If you guys don't know, because I'm always sitting and I'm just always like filming up here, <laughs> but like I'm only five foot two inches, okay? I'm very short. And I had a trainer who had one of those boxes. I Well, you won't see me. It's out of frame. But like it came up to my waist, like my high waist. And he wanted me to like vertical jump up in the air and land on this box. And I remember I was at this gym surrounded by really like buff people, like really fit people. And I just said, no, no. And he goes, you have to, you have to. He's like a you know the tough love kind of guy. And I was like, you're out of touch. He's like, come on, I can do it. Okay. You don't have a woman's body, especially my body. You don't have this. You're not toting this around. You're not five foot two. He's like six foot two. Shut up. Okay, <laughs> and he had so many muscles that could probably project him up to the ceiling. I don't want to hear about your nonsense. Leave me alone. I'm not jumping on the box. Going back to the elliptical slowly while I listen to nice music. Okay, <laughs> so that's the kind of thing, you know, <laughs> to that end when I'm saying like get a, an appropriate trainer. This also goes into setting boundaries. Um, you know, just because someone is successful at something doesn't mean that they know how you should be successful. All right, pyromorphite patience. So this is something new. It feels like it's opening up to you. The realization is there. You're making it happen. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. Do not rush this process. One, you could get overwhelmed. Two, you'll miss details and lessons and you'll have to go back and repeat them. So you'll get that um, kind of outcome where it's like, yeah, I made it. Oh, wait, why'd it go away? Because you didn't do everything. This... I'm not going to guarantee that it's going to be pleasant. But I also have this very strong feeling that it's not anything you can't handle. Unless you're going to, you know, self-sabotage and push out. You know what I mean? Like the coping. I don't, I don't want to say that maybe. Um, or keep yourself from looking at it, avoiding, delaying it. Let's see what this is. Selenite spiritual awakening. Do you see what's happening for you guys if you tuned into this group? You're having a moment, <laughs> you're having a moment uh, where you're like, okay, I need to be better to myself. I need to um, watch how much sugar I'm taking. I just ate a yogurt this morning and it wasn't until after I ate the dumb thing that I was like, oh, I should have looked at the sugars. I mean, I knew that, but oh, when it was, I was like, oh man, <laughs> gotta watch this, you know, that sort of thing. So. Not only is this for you to let go of old things so that you can start crafting the next chapter of your life, we're always reinventing ourselves, whether we realize it or not, but it's getting us prepped for a spiritual awakening. Now, there's a lot of talk around spiritual awakening and what needs to happen. A lot of people will tell you, you need to go vegan. I do not agree with that whatsoever. I love animals too, um, but self-righteousness, uh, emotional showboating, um, having an agenda that you just want to push on other people to control them uh that's darkness that's not that's not of the light light someone who is of the light says hey you know i went vegan it's worked for me if you're interested i would be happy to do this with you and help you through the process but if you feel like that's not right for you okay loving and accepting 
I'm telling you, there's a lot of cluster B personality disorder out, people out there who, you know, claim they're for animal rights or they're for this type of rights or whatever. And it's just so they have a cause to hide behind to be cruel and to be judgmental and to have a place to throw their dark energy. So just be cautious about that. Vegan diets do not work for everybody. No, they do not. <laughs> no, they do not. Uh, I, I learned it firsthand. It was not the appropriate thing for me. I needed a certain type of protein for me to be healthy. And uh, that's it. That's the end of it. You're not a doctor, right? Like that's, that, that, don't be afraid to tell people that when they're trying to push their agendas on you. Okay. So rainbow, connect to spirit in nature. The number is one. This whole thing for you guys is you, you need some self-evaluation here. You need a break. You need to de-stress. Yes, there's going to be some stuff coming out, but you can handle it. And once you do, I'm not going to say like this is your reward. I mean, there's a reward coming for sure. <laughs> but like, I don't want you to get into the space of like, oh, I made it. I don't have to do any more growth. Everybody leave me alone. <laughs> like, that's not how it's going to be. Obviously, you'll keep learning as a human. But there are beautiful times here. And sometimes, uh, you know, that growth has to do with the example I was given with vegans. It's okay to call out a toxic vegan, okay, who, again, is, you know, taking, I think that they're morally higher than anybody else and all of that when they're not. The very way of thinking that you're better than anybody else already shows that you're not, and that, that you don't understand that, that you're trying to put yourself on a pedestal. And in my opinion, merely my opinion, more disgustingly so, hiding behind a cause, right? I cannot tell you how many times I've heard people who work for nonprofits go, you have no idea what goes on behind closed doors. And I actually do because I used to work for nonprofits. Okay. They're not the angels that everyone thinks that they are. So we're just going to leave it there. Leave your comments down below. Um, we're going to leave it there for you guys and get on to group three. Hello, group three. Let's see what is going on for you. We have some house finches. I think they're house finches. I don't know if that's going to pick up, but they're out singing. <laughs> I love them so much. I think they're so beautiful. And they're always very respectful of my balcony. And you know what I mean. The barn swallows were never respectful, okay? They wanted to make sure they made their mark. <laughs> anyway, let's get on to what's going on for you guys here. Rhodochrosite acceptance. Now, first and foremost, rhodochrosite, let me move my microphone because I have moved out of the way. I'm so sorry. Uh, I need to get more organized. Okay. Uh, rhodochrosite is a love crystal. This is this like pure, deep, real kind of love. And a lot of times when this comes out, it says, hey, you open your heart by accepting, not trying to go back and change the past. I think that kind of came up for group one. But for you all, in this context, I feel like this is accept the love. There's love on offer. Accept it. Could this be romantic love? Now, I'm not encouraging anybody to cheat. I'm not going down that road. I'm not wasting my energy on that. If you know, you know. If you think you know, you'll find out what the truth is, energetically speaking. That's all I'm going to say about that. But if you're somebody who has been single for a very long time, or if maybe you were married a long time ago and you just said, oh, I'm never going to marry, that might change. <laughs> Someone might be coming along and really opening your heart. Now, another way that this could be interpreted is if someone cares about you, like I see this all the time. There's this weird, I don't know where it came from. You know, I'm being judgmental. I'm sorry. <laughs> but like, there's this thing where people are so like trying to be strong by not just refusing care that people are trying to offer, uh, but being nasty about it. I would love to do a reading for someone like that because I want to get to the bottom of what that is. So trying to shut people out, not accepting help, uh, thinking you could do everything on your own. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> um, so this is kind of accept the care, accept the help. If, if it is somebody who's trying to, you know, like, let's say we do have a cluster B personality type, 
um, or somebody who just has like some sort of toxic behavior and you know they're only offering help so they can put it over your head later on, maybe don't accept that help. But I'm saying if someone wants to check on you, you know, hey, you doing okay? And you're like, I can't talk about it. And you're all, don't do that, okay? Don't do that. For some reason, I'm thinking of the example of like, like let's say you have a neighbor who, you know, twisted their ankle. And now, God forbid. But, you know, there's a weather system moving in. You know it's not easy for them to get to the grocery store. And maybe you go check on them and say, hey, I'm your neighbor over here. I saw you hobbling on crutches. We've got this storm moving in. I'm heading to the store. W would you like me to pick anything up for you? Right? And yes, we're in the day of Uber Eats where you can order groceries. <laughs> we have all of that. But this is that kind of thing. If somebody, if you want to offer that and then that person says, I don't need anybody's help. I don't need anybody's help. That's, uh, that, the energetic exchange there, that ain't it. Okay? That is not it. Even if they don't want your help, Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your consideration. See, that's that's something that has... We have equated shutting out considerate people or shutting them down. We've equated that with being strong or connected it to some sort of suspicion around that person. Like, what do you want? Again, we live in a very narcissistic world. And yeah, we need to kind of be watching out for that but if someone you know them to be a genuine genuinely good person accept the help accept the care okay black obsidian the shadow i think this came up for group two so there's a lot of things being exposed a lot of things coming to light this could be about other people around you or situations there could be things out in the collective of course coming to light but this is you looking at your shadow self I know there are a lot of buzz terms around that. In the angelic work that I do, the shadow self is the fear self. It's looking at things that um, are uncomfortable maybe, right? But the more you just leave them there, it's like a dust bunny. <laughs> the more, if you're afraid to touch the dust bunny, it's only going to get bigger, right? So again, with proper support, accepting help for some of you, um, you know, especially if you've been through anything that has affected you deeply and maybe part of the narrative of being strong is that you don't get therapy like uh you can't go to therapy and not be strong <laughs> right like you got to be ready to look at that um and accepting proper help so please note that if you are going the route of getting a therapist a lot of cluster b types do get through the system and unfortunately, we're in such a world that we don't even see it. I see it. If you've been through any sort of narcissistic abuse, you see it. You know it. Move away from those people. Okay? You don't have to accept that. Get another therapist. All right. Divine Temple Source. You're clearing away a lot of the emotional clutter, mental clutter, spiritual clutter. You're, you're just going, you know what? I am letting this stuff go. I'm prioritizing my connection to Source. And not in a self-righteous way. Not in a self-righteous way. I'm better than anybody because I can hear the voice of God. Is that right? You know, I mean, <laughs> can I have a tangent? Can I have a moment of your time? What's with these religious people um, who make all these videos and they say, God told me, the Lord has given me a message for you. And then they turn around and say, mediums and channelers are evil. Hypocrisy, right? Recognize it. If you start to do that, recognize it. Acknowledge it, okay? The shadow, that's your shadow part, that's your ego coming in and saying, what I do is fine, what you do is not okay, and you need to be more like me. We're not doing that. So anyway, Source. Source has the answers for you here. And it's not a quick fix. It's not a quick fix. It's helping you, one, to be resourceful. That was a message from the top of the reading. But also to trust yourself more. There's that theme again. Emerald Compassion. <laughs> so you have compassion. You're developing that compassion. 
um, accepting compassion. Look at this. And these are both very heart center kind of cards. I don't have much more to say about that. Learn to accept people's compassion. Let me let me tell you a little quick thing here while I get the color cards out. I have so many times seen somebody struggling and not so I look like a good person or so like the, you know, what would you do guys would come out and have a gotcha moment because I didn't go over and offer to help somebody in a situation or whatever. Not for any other reason, but hey, are you okay? With you? I've got it. You're not strong. Actually, when you act like that towards someone, you're not being very accepting of their compassion and you're pushing them away. That just shows, <laughs> it shows more than you want it to show. Now, conversely, if you have somebody who's constantly playing victim, they won't even help themselves because they like the victimhood state. They like the attention they get. And I'm talking about people who take something that could easily be worked on. And I say easily, right? And they blow it up into like this major thing that they've had to deal with in their life. And it's because people fawn over them, pay attention to them, and you'll never see them get help. Watermelon. Have fun with your inner child. The number is three. So this is a lot about releasing being aware, having the energy now to just go be lighthearted, to go and just reconnect with your innocence, living from a pure place, not a self-righteous place, but an inner child, innocent kind of place. All right, so we're going to leave it there. I'm sending you all so much love and take care.